Hey guys, what's up? It's Zola, and today I'm going to be here to explain Luma mats, Alpha mats, uh, straight Alpha, pre multiplied Alpha, the meaning of life. Alright, maybe not the meaning of life, but you know, like those other four things, there's quite a lot to fit into one lesson as it stands. So um, there's a lot to get through, and I'm, I intend to get through it, so let's do this. Um, First thing I'm going to try and explain is what an alpha channel is. Now you've probably, if you've been watching all my tutorials so far, you probably know already, but I'm just, to, in, in terms of breaking it down, um, let me bring in this cube. And as we can see here, the alpha chat, this picture has an alpha channel, we can see here because it's got millions of colors plus. If we look at this pre-multiplied plus, if you see a plus, it basically has an alpha channel. And we can verify that by dropping it in here and toggling the transparency. And as you can see, I can see the grid around it, which means there's transparency there. Hence, it has an alpha channel. If, um, now, what's the difference between straight and pre-multiplied? Um, a long story short, if you can get something with a straight alpha channel, then please do. Um, After Effects just enjoys reading straight alpha channel better. So if, uh, as you saw there, I went into the footage properties. Uh, you will also get this dialog when you import footage, but if you don't, you can go to right click, interpret footage, and then main, which is just off the screen here, and choose straight, unmattered, um, unless your alpha channel is pre-multiplied, in which case you would select pre-multiplied. Uh, let's compare the two. So if I bring them in here, and what I'm gonna do is put a solid behind here, make it nice and pink, and let's have a look. So this is our cube on straights. And if we zoom in, you can see here it's got uh, nice clean edges. Obviously I'm zoomed in that 200% here, so probably. But you know, nice clean edges, um, it looks good. Uh, cool, let me hide this and bring in pre-multiplied here. And this kind of looks all right as well. Uh, however, if I change Oh, sorry, let me change the um, color of this from pink to maybe uh, something more around these ranges, like a sick green. Um, we can see now we've got this kind of like white fringe. Now let's bring back the straight cube and we'll see there's absolutely no fringe on here. Now you kind of can deal with this by, um, if you drop a simple choker on here, uh, and bring that up slightly. What this does is it just kind of like chokes the alpha of your um, layer. So if you just bring this to like one, uh, can you see that's kind of got rid of like the edge of the cube, but it's still not as uh, clean as like the straight alpha. So uh, my recommendation is if you can bring something in with a straight alpha, After Effects just likes it better. End of story. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to explain is preserving transparency. Now, this is a kind of um, subject which is very much separate to everything else. I'm going to make some text here. Again, we'll do text in another lesson um, just for the sake of showing you what I'm doing. And if I put, uh, let's make, let's just bring, I have a picture here of like some clouds and I'm going to drop that on top here and if I check check if I check this little checkbox here we can see that what it's doing is it's kind of like in Photoshop it's gonna do what a clipping mask does and it's gonna look down at the layers underneath it and look for their transparency and obviously this text has transparency all around because it's only opaque where we type the text and so this is going alright cool well I'm gonna look underneath and take your transparency thank you very much and if I drop another layer on here, like this castle, and tick that, that layer is going to do the same. So that's kind of awesome. And um, you know, then you can change the blending modes, kind of like mix them up a bit. And anyway, it's kind of cool that you can use the transparency information from the bottom item in your composition to uh, give transparency information to everything above. So that's kind of useful. And that's called collapse trans uh, preserve transparency. And it's this little. Uh, checkbox here. Now let's move on to mats. And what is a mat? Now I've explained two ways of um, separating something from a background. We've done rotor brush and we've done uh, masking with the pen tool and the and the shape tool and all that that jazz. Now 
why why would I want to use a mat? What is a mat? Well, let's have a look at this um, Peroni breakdown I did um, a few years ago. And uh, let's have a look at this shot in particular. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in here a bit. Now, what I was asked to do, this was my original shot. And this was what it ended up as. So what did I do here? Well, the answer is I had to... Um, Changed, they, they shot this in spring, but the advert came out in the autumn, so I had to change all the colors of the trees and stuff to make it like seem like it was autumn. And then I had to add like uh, a load of mountains there in the background and change the size of this sign as well, which um, took a while. But what, what did I do here? Um, now, the answer is I used luma matting, and the reason being. For me to individually mask out every branch of this tree so that I could uh, do this with the pen tool, physically impossible. Like, absolutely no way it can be done. However, by manipulating the, the footage I already had, which is this footage, I was able to uh, mat it against itself and create um, a, a mat. Uh, or you can a mat is basically a mask. So I, I was able to create a mask from the footage itself by uh, matting it against itself. So what does that mean? Because that all sounds really confusing, right? Well, let me show you an example. Here I have uh, this this really cool castle, and I want to add these clouds to it, right? Simple sky replacement, probably like one of the first things you're going to want to do. I've done a Photoshop tutorial about how to do this properly. Go watch it, it's in the corner. If you haven't watched it, shame on you. Uh, die a painful death. Now, if I want to do this in After Effects or with moving footage, the principle is the same. So I'm going to repeat what I did in that one, which is we're going to... So a mat is... What I'm going to do here is try and build a black and white image where everything here in this section is black and all the sky is white. And then when I luma mat it, um, everything that's within here is going to stay opaque and then the sky is just going to disappear, right? Because there's no way with my pen tool I would be able to go in here and start masking these trees. It's impossible, right? It literally can't be done. So what we're going to have to do here is be clever. So I'm going to make a duplicate because uh, I'm going to need to make um, a black and white version of this. So I've got my color one down here, still here. I've still got my sky and I've got this color one up here. Now I need to make this into black and white. What's the best way to do that? Well, I'm going to do Alt 1, press Alt 2 and Alt 3. And what I'm looking here for is the most contrast of the trees against the sky. Again, I've explained why in the Photoshop tutorial, so please do watch that and then this will make more sense. So, okay, the blue channel, as always, is the one to go with because the sky is blue. So obviously it makes sense that there's the most contrast there. I'm going to come into here and look for set channels. By the way, this is not the fastest way of doing this by any means, but for the sake of a 10 minute tutorial, it will do. Um, I'm going to change all the channels to blue. So blue, blue, job done. So we've basically created the black and white image using uh, the blue channel. And don't worry about what I did up there. Like you can follow it along. It's just basically I'm changing all the channels to the blue channel so that we get this black and white image. Um, so if I was to loom and mat this now, it would probably work, but we could do with adding more contrast and making all this area completely dark. So I'm going to bring up the trusty levels command. And if you've been doing the Photoshop stuff, you'll know this by heart. So I'm going to bring the whites down first to kind of blow out the sky, which we've kind of got. This down here is going to be a problem. So I might do it in two passes and then I'm just going to bring this like crunch the rest of it down now obviously I've gone a bit too far there because we're getting uh, all that kind of stuff there but uh, we can kind of fiddle around with these and you know what for the sake of this tutorial I'm not going to be too anal about this so um, let's just do that and then maybe drop another levels on there and just try and get a bit more out this map and I think that's about as good as we're gonna get folks so you know we've at least we've got everything around here and obviously we're missing stuff here and this could be done better but this is not what the tutorial is about what I'm explaining is how do I now use 
this black and white information as a mask for this layer? Well, the answer is simple. You come here into track map, change this to luma mat, and I want inverted because remember, a normal mat would have white as transparent, uh, white as opaque, sorry, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to do luma mat inverted, and there we go. It's not perfect by any means, as we could see if we zoom in here, but it's a hell of a lot better than you would have got by masking straight away. And obviously there's then ways in which to tweak this picture to get it to come closer to what we want. Obviously we've got a bit of a fringe here, but this lesson is not about keying. It's about showing you that you can use an image as a mask and hopefully I've done that. Um, if I did Luma Mat inverted, you would have the complete opposite. So the sky would be kept and obviously we've like uh, made all this transparent instead, which is not what we want. Uh, it's worth noting there's something called alpha mat as well, which does exactly the same thing. It takes the layer above and uses the alpha information um, to make the transparency of this layer. So if I was to show you that real quick, it's kind of not super useful. I find myself very rarely using it, but you know, for the sake of me showing you stuff, let me find, so I've got this cube on red, right? I'm gonna make a composition. So um, I've rendered this straight out of 3D program one of my better works. Um, there's, as you can see, there's no transparency here. This red is built into the image and so is this gray cube. But what I can do is I've got a black and white image of this cube here, which is happens to be in exactly the same place, lucky us. And I can just go to this and go, oh, sorry, I've, I've used a, a Luma cube there. I apologize profusely. Um, I'm gonna use this here. So if we solo this, um, this is our cube from earlier on and uh, as you can see here it has alpha information so what I can now do is on this red and gray picture use the alpha information from the layer above which is this one so if I change this to alpha map there we go so we're basically using the alpha information from the layer above to get rid of the red on this one and then we can drop a background behind here we still have that hor horrible green selected and there you have it folks um, hopefully that clears up what a mat is, why you would try and make a Luma mat. Um, if it seems like it's complicated, that's because there's so many techniques to try and get like separate your sky and your background. And honestly, I could do like a small series on that because like I said, with stuff like um, trees and all that kind of stuff with sky replacement, there is no other way to do it than Luma matting and uh, making a black and white mat using your image information and so it's kind of crucial that you learn how to manipulate it if you're going to end up doing that kind of stuff but that's more into compositing and we'll do that another day so thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed it if you're a bit lost with all this you can watch it again and if you want to know more about luma matting and you know sky replacement definitely go watch the tutorial that i did on photoshop as i said earlier thanks for watching and see you next time